Well, as the Northern Inyo Healthcare District plans for the July 1st start of a new fiscal year, district leadership updated the board of directors last Wednesday night on the economic challenges facing the healthcare organization and on some pleasantly surprising statistics regarding cost of care in the region compared to the state average. Uh, press release from Northern Inyo Healthcare District states that interim chief financial officer John Tremble presented a five-year comparison of daily inpatient charges between hospitals of a similar size throughout the state and along the eastern Sierra region. Hospitals reviewed included Antelope Valley in Lancaster, as well as Ridgecrest Northern Inyo Hospital, Mammoth Hospital, and South Lake Tahoe's Barton Health. Now, Tremble said Northern Inyo Hospital does not have the highest rates, and he displayed the results of his finding in a chart. He said we're consistently below the state average and well positioned in the middle of the regional costs. And he continued to say your efforts to keep down cost to patients have paid off. Tremble's findings show that in 2015, the most current figures available, the average char per, charge per inpatient day in the state was almost $17,000, $16,937. Of the five regional hospitals, four fell below the state's average. Ridgecrest was the lowest with $12,426. Antelope Valley at $13,863. Barton at $14,641. And Northern Inyo Hospital at $15,279. The press release states only Mammoth was higher, coming in at $33,000. And $84. Now, a look at the five year trend showed some variances with hospitals jockeying between positions depending on the year. However, Northern Inyo Hospital and Ridgecrest have maintained the most consistent positions, offering a steadily lower average daily inpatient charge since 2010. Now, Tremble then turned his attention to the coming year while district staff hoped to present the proposed 2017 18 operating budget to board members in April, continued efforts to find cost reductions and to counterbalance a less than perfect reimbursement system resulted in a delay. Press release goes on to say that Tremble placed a fair shame of balancing woes on the shoulders of Congress and its 2013 sequestration plan. Presented as a temporary fix to federal budget woes, it continues to haunt the health care systems five years later. Now, Tremble said it impacts everything from outpatient fee schedules to vaccines to professional fees, rural health clinic services to swing beds. Other budget balancing challenges remain the increased cost of services, a decrease of inpatient revenue as the district keeps pace with the national shift to increased outpatient care and the need to replace aging equipment. Now that press release says, well, it seems apparent that Northern Indian Health Care District will have to increase rates. The question remains, how much? Now, in an interview Thursday, Chief Executive Officer Kevin S. Flanagan, MD, MBA, said the staff is working hard to reduce costs while preserving its focus on improved health outcomes. Dr. Flanagan said this past fiscal year and next are transition years, which are always a fiscal challenge. Flanagan said the district is working hard to achieve the fiscal shortage laid out last year with a greater emphasis on outpatient services and less dependence on inpatient care. Well, a presentation on the North Sierra Highway Draft Corridor Plan will be presented in your county planning department, facilitating a meeting of the Northern Sierra Highway Corridor Plan Advisory Committee, inviting and encouraging the public to attend and receive a presentation on the draft North Sierra Highway Corridor Plan this Thursday. Now, back in the summer of 2016, Inyo County has been soliciting in public input for the North Sierra Highway planning area that encompasses Highway 395 from Highway 6 Y Road intersection to Brockman Lane. Now this week's meeting, a staff will be presenting an, an overview of the draft corridor plan, both to the North Sierra Advisory Committee and to the public. If you have any interest in this area, you are encouraged to attend that meeting that is set for Thursday, 6 to 7.30 p.m., Northern Inyo Hospital Boardroom. That's the old Saracoso building near Manor Markets on Birch Street in Bishop. Questions or comments about this meeting or the draft corridor plan, you can contact Tom Shaniel of the Inyo County Planning Department at 760-878-0405.
Well, Deb Murphy filed a story for Sierra Wave Media noting the Inyo County Board of Supervisors dealt with a couple of sticky land issues at last Tuesday's meeting, short-term rentals and how to deal with storage and or shipping containers in residential areas. Now, the former will be the subject of community outreach, the latter possibly with a modification to zoning ordinances and a no-cost route for temporary storage. First, the short-term rentals, commonly referred to as Airbnbs, just one of the internet sites that have fueled the rental of whole houses or simply rooms to visitors. Inyo County Acting Planning Director Kathleen Richards presented a list of alternatives ranging from outright prohibition to allowing them with regulations and avenues for licensing and permitting. According to Richards, Airbnb alone lists 52 rentals in Inyo County with Foreign Bishop. Now, those avenues include a conditional use permit or zoning overlays. Both require public hearings at the Planning Commission and Board of Supervisors, giving the complaining public a chance to voice its concern. Also, storage containers. Now, according to Richards, complaints came in on three separate storage containers currently regulated as accessory structures with setback restrictions. Temporary container that's been sitting in the front of a yard of a West Bishop home for the last year generated a number of complaints to Inyo County Supervisor Rick Pucci. Now, the owner complied with zoning setbacks, which didn't ease the complaint since the container was still in the resident's front yard. Now, one solution was a conditional use permit at a cost of roughly $1,500. Inyo County Administrative Officer Kevin Caruncio suggested prohibiting containers in front yards on a temporary basis without a zoning variance, a no-cost substitute for the CUP, and that solution seemed acceptable by the board. Deb's full story is on our website, sierrawave.net. Well, two longtime community active people in the eastern Sierra have died recently. Former Bishop Mayor Susan Cullen passed Wednesday, May 17th, the age of 68. Susan was born February 26, 1949. She grew up in Bishop from elementary school through high school. Susan also grew up at her family's mountain resort, the Arcularius Ranch, later became the manager of the ranch in the 1970s after managing the resort Susan Cullen spent over 30 years in various accounting positions in Southern California. Upon retiring, Susan returned to Bishop and served on many local boards, groups, commissions, including Laws Railroad Museum, Rotary International, City of Bishop Water Commission, and Amaka. Among one of her proudest community achievements was serving multiple elected terms as a Bishop City Council member, as well as being the mayor for the City of Bishop. A longtime patriot, of the United States, Susan was a generous supporter of the VFW, Wounded Warriors, and the current regent or president of the local chapter of DAR, the Daughters of American Revolution. Memorial service for Susan Cullen is set for this Friday at Bruni Mortuary in Bishop. In honor of Susan's passion for the Owens Valley history, donations can be given to the Laws Railroad Museum on her behalf. Also, Don Zelani of Mammoth Lakes recently passed on May 12th. Don earned two degrees in physics from New Mexico Mining and Technology and UC Riverside, had a 35-year career as a U.S. Navy civil servant at the Navy's Weapons Center in Point Magoo, where he earned an additional degree in systems management from USC. His engineering prowess was instrumental in supporting the U.S. Navy's weapons systems. Don was a supporter of Chamber Music Unbound, Mammoth Lakes Repertory Theater, Eastern Sierra Symphony, Mono Lake Committee, Eastern Sierra Land Trust, Mammoth Lakes Friends of the Library, the Mammoth Lakes Foundation, as well as the Southern Mono Historical Society and Valentine Reserve. Now, should friends desire, you can make memorial contributions to Chamber Music Unbound or the Mammoth Lakes Repertory Theater, a celebration of life for Don Zelani, scheduled for the end of June. You can see both of those full obituaries on Susan and Don on our website, sierrawave.net. We'll be back with more news.